Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am Arif, your Cloud Learning Journey Partner. Well, today it's a very special video. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about very basics of AWS services. So I'm going to go through some of the AWS services that you must need to know. So it could be your stepping stone, your first lesson for AWS. So without further delay, let's get started. I have already logged into my personal AWS account and from here, if I click services, under services, left side, here we can see the sections or categories of services. So just if I click storage here, we can see multiple services related to storage, same with other services too. So we'll start from the beginning. So in today's video, we're going to cover some few categories. First one is compute. Second one is database. The third one is networking and content delivery. Fourth security identity and compliance and the last one is storage if we click our first category compute the very first service that you need to get familiar with is ec2 ec2 stands for elastic compute cloud so whenever we have to deal with virtual servers in the cloud we have to use ec2 service under ec2 we can deploy maybe windows or linux based uh, servers it's uh, very important to know about ec2 because uh, EC2 has multiple subsections and multiple functionalities and if we are uh, very much familiar with EC2 even with this sort of knowledge you can start f doing freelancing because there are tons of jobs I see under Upwork that requires EC2 knowledge so it's a very good starting point to learn cloud. The second service that uh, I would suggest to learn after EC2 is Elastic Beanstalk. Suppose uh, we do have a web application and we don't want to uh, manage the underlying infrastructure that we'll use to run the application. We want to run our application with minimum effort. In that case, Elastic Beanstalk is a very good option. With few clicks, we can deploy our application um, on cloud and it will run smoothly and everything in the backend, for an example, the auto scaling, load balancing, everything will be handled from AWS side, which is great. So if we know this service, your life will be much easier. The next service uh, and the last service from this section you need to know is Lambda. Well, I am pretty sure you guys have heard about serverless. So now there's many popular web applications are running on serverless platform. So what's the concept behind the platform is that we will just provide the code and we won't manage the underlying infrastructure or the servers behind it. So what's the benefit of using serverless? There are multiple benefits. The first one is that there will be very less downtime, almost zero. And the second one is the cost optimization. So we will only get charged when our code is being invoked or executed. Without that part, we are not paying for 24 by 7 for uh, hosting our code like we are paying under our EC2 and Elastic Beanstalk. So for that reason, Lambda is a very powerful tool to know about. The second category is database. So under database section, the first service uh, you need to learn is uh, RDS. RDS stands for Relational Database Service. So whenever we are dealing with managed relational database service, then we have to use RDS. So under RDS, we can deploy MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQL Server, any sort of relational database. And the good thing about RDS is that we can connect to our servers, but the backend are managed from AWS site. So we don't get our uh, access keys, like private access key, the way we got for our EC2 servers. So in this way, some portion of the security part will be managed from AWS side. So for an instance, if we want to have a database in cloud, then we do have two options. One option is to host the database or install the database, for instance, for MySQL. If we want to install that database in our in our EC2 server, we can do it, but we have to manage everything from our end, the availability, the security and everything. But if we go, go with RDS and just use MySQL from RDS console, then we don't have to manage the backend and also we don't have to manage most of the security elements. But some of the security part are also a shared responsibility. 
for our own good but it's a very good service to know about the second service that i suggest to learn under database is DynamoDB. So RDS is for relational database. What about NoSQL database? So where we don't have any sort of relation of our database, then DynamoDB is a very good option. Under DynamoDB, we can uh, create multiple a type of uh, key pair values. And these key pair values are very easier and faster to sort. And most of the time nowadays in gaming industry, DynamoDB is a very popular tool to use because it gives the flexibility and also it's faster comparing to relational database. Let's move into our third category, which is networking and content delivery. The very first service that we need to get familiar with is VPC. VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. So VPC is a isolate cloud resources. Under VPC, we do have a CIDR block, we can divide the CIDR block into multiple subnets. We do have internet gateway, we do have route tables, we do have NSCL. So it's a complete virtual networking system. So for an instance, suppose if we deploy a new EC2 server or RDS DB, we need IP addresses, right? We need the networking facilities. All of these are pretty much getting from VPC. So if we know VPC, then we will understand how this whole cloud system is working. So it's very important to actually know about VPC in and out. It will definitely help in your career. The second service that uh, is important to know about is uh, Route 53. Route 53 is a domain name service, DNS. So what is DNS? Well, uh, if we type www.amazon.com, so we see Amazon website. So what is happening in the back end? Well, at the back end, this name address, this uh, Amazon.com is being converted to the IP addresses that are attached to uh, this domain. So exactly Route 53 is that thing. So under Route 53, we can purchase domains and we can attach these domains to our EC2 server or we can attach those domain to our load balancers to distribute traffic to multiple EC2 servers. And if we already have domain under GoDaddy or different other provider, we can create a hosted zone under Route 53 and we can use this hosted zone to actually serve traffic to our web application that are configured under AWS backend. The third service that we need to know about is CloudFront. So what is CloudFront? CloudFront is a content delivery network. It, in short, we can call it CDN. So what's the purpose of CDN? Suppose we do have one web application and we have deployed the application in US North Virginia region, but there are almost 20, 25 other regions. And so suppose from Ireland, Europe, one of our potential client is searching our website but as the distance is so far so it will take some time to load our web application because of the latency the distance so we always want to have a very optimized system where we can serve our traffic very fast right so in that case route 50 this cloud Front is a solution so under cloud Front, what happens that it caches our objects or our contents to multiple ages, age locations. Next section is security, identity and compliance. And this is a very interesting section and one of the most important section of AWS. Because whenever a client is moving their data to cloud, the first concern is whether it's secure. So. AWS has done an excellent job to make sure that the data that will be migrated to cloud are totally secure. So in this section, the first service that you need to know about is IAM. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. So once we create an AWS account, we will get a root user. And suppose in your organization, there are multiple developers, there are some system administrators, there are some QA 
team so you uh, you can create multiple groups under iam and each you can assign permission to each group so pretty much you are handling the permissions the security a major portion of it from aws iam so it's very important to know each of the single functionality of iam well in my future videos i will definitely explain each and every service in details but today's video is all about to actually have a basic concept what each and every service is that are very important to know for aws well the second service that we can look at is waf and shield so suppose we are uh, hosting a web application in AWS and we know web application works in layer 7 in OSI model so in layer 7 there are multiple type of attacks that can happen for example DDoS attack it's one of the very popular attacks that can happen to your application so we need firewall we need something in place that will first filter the traffic and it will uh, filter traffic whether it's a legit traffic or it's kind of like attack so WAF can help us with that WAF is for web application firewall and if we attach this WAF with our load balancers or with our API gateway it will help us to actually filter those traffic we can define multiple rules and we can also get some sort of AWS marketplace third-party vendors for this kind of filtration and it's a very cool product in future videos I'll definitely go in depth and show you how we should use this service well the third service that we need to know about from security is secret manager so what is secret manager if we read the description it says easily rotate manage and retrieve secrets through their life cycle so secrets means suppose we do have some credential or access keys that we 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 need to pass in our code so if we type the secrets or password or credential in our inside our code it's a very bad practice what if our our server get hacked then all the secrets are uh, leaked that means our servers are our application is compromised so what we sh can do we can use this secret manager we can save our credentials in here securely and whenever we need to use those credentials from code we can call this specific service and the, this code will have that sort of all application have that sort of permission to access secret manager in this way it's a very good practice to actually secure your application and code the fourth service that we can look into is in guard duty so what is guard duty it is an intelligent threat detection to protect our aws account and workloads so guard duty is a very cool product it helps us to actually find any sort of malicious activities for an instance you have launched some ec2 instances servers and uh, you are using it but the security is not that tight for some reason someone hacked your uh, ec2 server and they are using your ec2 server for mining bitcoins or other cryptocurrencies so, or some other malicious things maybe for some ddos attacks your uh, ec2 server is working as a zombie net right so this uh, could be prevented by using guard duty so it will give uh, give you a very good insight about your whole AWS services. If we look into storage, the very first service that we need to know about is S3. S3 stands for Simple Storage Service. So what is uh, S3? So we can uh, say S3 is some sort of Dropbox because most of the functionality matches. Uh, well, uh, S3 is cooler to Dropbox because S3 is limitless. You can save as many files you want under S3. Uh, but of course you have to pay for every G, uh, gb basis so you have to pay uh, one cool feature of s3 is that you can host a static website under s3 um, and it's uh, quite faster compared to ec2 or elastic beanstalk solution the second service that uh, we should be familiar with is s3 glacier 
suppose we have multiple files uh, and we are not using most of them and if we put all the files on the s3 standard then we have to pay a premium price for all the files so what if we want to archive those files so s3 glacier can be used to archive those files we can set up a life cycle so after this certain period of time those files will be transferred to s3 glacier for archival purposes so in this way we are saving our hard-earned money congratulations for reaching this far of this video so the whole purpose of today's video was to actually get you familiar with uh, some very important services of aws if you guys have any question or concerns related to the services please feel free to send me uh, a message under this comment section and i will definitely answer you back and please like and subscribe to my channel for seeing videos like this in future and goodbye for today